You've probably heard of the scientific method before, but do you know where it comes from or how old it is? Do you know the different types of reasoning used by scientists when employing the scientific method? Do you know the difference between a hypothesis and a theory? Well, if you don't, that's why I'm making this video. The scientific method describes a standard approach to attempting to explain unexplained phenomenon in the known universe. Now you probably know that, but do you know that the scientific method is really old? Like really, really old? Like, have you seen the new play by Shakespeare called Macbeth old? Because it is. The scientific method was first described by Sir Francis Bacon way back in the 1500s. No. Sir Francis Bacon had grown tired of the traditional approach of explaining unexplained phenomena through the use of largely supernatural explanations. Instead, Sir Francis Bacon proposed a mechanism of explaining unexplained natural phenomena through natural means. And that is what's given rise to the modern scientific method. Now, the modern scientific method is fairly simple. We make lots of observations about whatever phenomenon or event that we're attempting to, to describe. We come up with a possible explanation for that event that we call a hypothesis, and then we test it through scientific experimentation. But in order to do this, we have to rely upon two major types of scientific reasoning. The first type of reasoning is called inductive reasoning. And the easiest way to remember the difference between inductive and deductive reasoning is that inductive reasoning relies us on taking information in. We make lots of observations and we collect those observations, put them together and say, based on these observations, I think the reason why this event or this phenomenon occurs or how it occurs is through this. And that potential explanation is what we call a hypothesis. Now we'll talk about in future videos, we'll talk about what makes a good hypothesis versus a bad hypothesis. We'll talk more in detail about how to actually test those. But using inductive reasoning is how we get to our hypotheses. Once we have a hypothesis though, we have to test it. We can't just say, oh, here's my best guess. I guess that will suffice. No, we have to use scientific experimentation to actually test our hypothesis to find out whether our hypothesis is supported or not, whether we're right or whether we are wrong. So deductive reasoning is the opposite of inductive reasoning. Once we've come up with that singular premise, that hypothesis, using inductive reasoning, think of inductive reasoning as an upside down triangle. We use deductive reasoning, a triangle with this point at the top, to make predictions about what should be true if our hypothesis is accurate. So you can think of deductive reasoning as a triangle with this point at the top, where in deductive reasoning we say, okay, if my hypothesis is correct, then A, B, C, D, and whatever must be true. And that is what we design our scientific experiments to test. We use our scientific experiments to test those predictions. And if we test all of those predictions and those predictions all hold up, then we can say, hey, our hypothesis is a very good one. It's supported by all of the evidence. It's supported by our experiments. On the other hand, if some of those predictions turn out to be false, then what we have to do is we have to go back and we have to revise our hypothesis. And as we revise our hypothesis, the scientific method brings us closer and closer and closer to truly understanding that particular unexplained event or that particular unexplained phenomenon. And that is the value of science. Science means to know. And that is what we're attempting to do using a combination of inductive and deductive reasoning. And what's great is this, once we've collected all of our data, once we've done our experiments through deductive reasoning, we now have more information, right? So what do we do? We go right back to the inductive reasoning process. We use all that new information to make a new and refined hypothesis, or we use it to make new hypotheses about other observations that we've made that are unexplained. So what's the difference then between a hypothesis and a theory? You may often hear people in everyday life use the word theory when they're trying to say that, I guess, I guess this is why that happens. But in science, that's not correct. 
The modern, everyday use of the word theory is much more akin to our scientific use of the word hypothesis. In science, things have to be elevated to a theory. A theory is what happens when you have dozens or hundreds of hypotheses that are tested again and again with lots of evidence to support them. And then you can put them all together to form a theory. In science, a theory is our closest approximation of what we would call a fact. Look at things like evolutionary theory, gravitational theory, atomic theory, cell theory. Does anyone truly doubt that all living things are made of cells? I don't think so. But we don't call that a law. A law is a term that's reserved for very specific scientific fields, particularly math. In most scientific fields, we don't refer to things as laws. We get to theory, and that's about as far as we get. But don't confuse our scientific use of the word theory with the everyday use of the word theory. In science, it's fairly safe to assume that if something is a theory, it has been elevated to a theory, so to speak, that it's as close to a fact as you're probably going to get. And the reason for this is simple. Through inductive and deductive reasoning, in science, we never like to assume that we know the absolute answer to everything. We always leave the door open for new evidence to come in. And if that new evidence comes in and changes our understanding of the universe, then that's great too. One of the things we'll learn about in these videos and throughout all of my videos is that in science, it's okay to be wrong because science literally means to know. And sometimes in being wrong, we learn something new. In fact, oftentimes in being wrong, we learn more about a phenomenon or an event than we do by being right. So in science, don't be afraid to be wrong. If you have a hypothesis, make your hypothesis and then test it. And whatever information you gain from there is knowledge that you didn't have before. Can we use the scientific method beyond just science? Absolutely. And that's the other thing I want to encourage you guys. You can live a more scientific life. You can use the scientific theory or the scientific method outside of physics or chemistry. You can use it in your everyday life. If you don't know an explanation for something, don't just go with whatever feels right. Look it up. Somebody's probably attempted to explain it. And guess what? If somebody hasn't attempted to explain it, go and find out for yourself. I hope you found this video informative. That's all I have for you guys today, and I'll see you guys next time.